Guardians, welcome to another episode of Destiny 2 Builds. Today, we're delving into the dark abyss of Void Warlock, unveiling a build that will shroud the battlefield in darkness and weaken everything in its path. With Void Souls at your command, prepare to witness enemies tremble before you. But this build isn't just about darkness, it's about survivability, ability regeneration, and the relentless pursuit of victory. With a focus on Devour, Void Souls, and the devastating power of Volatile Rounds, you'll become an unstoppable force in any PvE scenario Destiny 2 throws your way. From confronting Mighty Raid and Dungeon Bosses, to facing endless waves of enemies in the upcoming Horde Mode, this build has you covered. So gather your fire team and prepare your arsenal as we unveil the ultimate Void Warlock build designed to dominate PvE content in Destiny 2. Prepare to embrace the darkness, harness its power, and join us as we descend into the depths of chaos. Remember to leave a like if you find this video helpful, and if you like seeing build videos and other Destiny 2 helpful content, consider hitting that subscribe button. With that being said, let's jump right on into it. It almost seems like when it comes to Void subclasses, each class excels in one area. Titans are best at creating and giving over shield. Hunters can basically stay invisible 100% of the time. With Warlocks, we have a constant source of weakening. And the gameplay loop goes like this. Pop your Rift to create a Void Soul. Damage a bigger target to send that soul flying at them. Once your soul is in position, it will damage every target in range, giving you back more ability energy and dealing more damage with each kill it gets. In the meantime, this will also activate Devour, so you can start throwing your grenades everywhere. Once your soul and grenades have killed everything in the area, run over and pick that soul up so you can keep the ramped up damage and send it flying at the next group of enemies. This really starts to make the Void Warlock build a mobile one. So let's dive into the build and break down how it works. First up for our super, we are taking Nova Bomb, and we're taking the Cataclysm form of it. As far as boss DPS and single target damage goes, Nova Bomb Cataclysm is the best option. You could go for Nova Warp if you want more ad clearing potential, but it's not really necessary with this build. And for our abilities, the first ability we're taking is going to be Healing Rift. Healing Rift is the better option here. The extra damage from Empowering could be helpful, but it's not as helpful as having a Healing Rift that might actually help out your teammates that might not be able to heal as much as you. For our melee ability, we're going with Pocket Singularity. It is the only option for your melee. It's okay, but mainly it makes enemies volatile, which can proc Devour. And as we know, Devour heals us and also gives us more grenade energy. So for our grenade, we're going to take Vortex Grenade. It's one of the strongest and most consistent options. We will be using it to cause extra weakening, so it does become even stronger. And the aspects for this build are really what make it so strong. When using Briar Binds, it's a no-brainer to pick Child of the Old Gods. This aspect makes it so that when you cast a Rift, you create a Void Soul. You can damage a target with your weapon to send that Void Soul flying towards them. It is worth noting that if you one-shot an enemy, your Void Soul likely won't activate. Once your Void Soul reaches the enemy, it will cause a damage over time and weaken targets in its radius. This will also inherently give you grenade and melee energy about every second, and it will give you class ability energy on every kill. And this soul really starts to become powerful with Briar Binds. Not only will the Void Soul last 50% longer, but you can also pick it up and redeploy it, making it better for moving around the battlefield and whenever your soul does get a kill it will get an additional damage that stacks all the way up to hundred percent more damage and since our void soul is now so powerful we add in our second aspect with feed the void this aspect now grants you devour upon getting a void ability kill this also becomes an enhanced version of devour which gives you full health and hundred percent increased grenade energy compared to regular devour this really allows you to stay alive easier and with your void soul and devour you'll be gaining back ability energy in no time we will be powering up our grenades since we throw so many of them with the power of devour the first way we're doing that is with echo of undermining making it so that our grenades now weaken targets not only does this help in case you don't have your void soul ready but this also pairs perfectly with our next fragment echo of harvest and this makes it so that killing a weakened target creates an orb and a void breach we will be weakening nearly all targets in sight so this helps to get back class ability energy and power up our build with our mods we will also bring echo of instability so that grenade kills will give our void weapons volatile rounds volatile rounds are super strong and help us deal even more damage with the pure amount of grenade we can throw this means that we will nearly constantly have volatile rounds active so make sure to bring those void weapons to take advantage of this and for our final fragment we're bringing echo of persistence and i mainly do that so that devour that we activate will last about 50 percent longer this just makes it a little bit easier to guarantee that you'll always have devour active and devour on this build is super strong all right let's talk about ways to improve 
improve the build for our stats. First up, we're going for resilience and we're shooting for 100. While we do get full health from Enhanced Devour, we want to make sure that we don't get melted by anything like a boss or a mini boss. So that 30% extra resilience is key. After that, I like to shoot for 100 discipline. Vortex Grenade has a pretty long cooldown. And since it gives us volatile rounds and weakens targets, we want to shorten that cooldown as much as possible. And finally, I shoot for 70 recovery. We will be taking a font mod to give us an extra 30 to our recovery whenever we do have armor charge, meaning that we should nearly always have 100 recovery, which helps with healing quicker, but more importantly, getting our rift back quicker. All right, let's take a look at the rest of our armor mods. First up for our helmet, we are taking Harmonic Siphon so that rapid void weapon kills will create orbs. Orbs just help power up this build a little bit more, so we do want to create as many as possible. We do want to pair this with our classic combo, Heavy Ammo Finder and Heavy Ammo Scout so that we can generate more Heavy Ammo Breaks for us and for our team. But this really depends on the weapons that you're running. If you're running something like Graviton Lance, then the Heavy Ammo is good. But if you want to run something like Wave Splitter, then you really need to switch these out for the Special Ammo Finders. So kind of match it up with whatever the weapons you're using. If you're running Double Special, you need the Special Ammo Ammo finder but if you are running a primary then just go for the heavy ammo all right taking a look at our gauntlet mods first up we're going to take firepower with enhanced devour we get our grenade back a ton we'll use that so that our grenade will create orbs and this also pairs with our earlier fragment so that it's possible to create two orbs on one grenade kill we then take bolstering detonation and focusing strike so that our grenade and melee will both give back 12 percent ability energy upon dealing damage you can have more than one void soul active on the field so it's nice to pop your rift whenever you have it available. All right, taking a look at our chest mods, we are going to be taking the three resistance mods. And I usually like to take one of each element. So in this case, that would be a harmonic siphon to cover our void. And then we'll take a solar and an arc. So we're getting a base 15% from nearly all types of damage in Destiny 2 PvE content. All right, let's take a look at the leg mods. I do like to take three void weapon searches. This will amp up our weapon damage by 22% and pair that with volatile rounds means that we can shred anything in sight. This will also mean that you want to end up bringing a void weapon in the energy slot and the heavy slot. So just keep that in mind. All right, for our mark mods, the first one I'm going to be taking is going to be Bomber, and this is going to give 12% grenade energy whenever we use our class ability. We already get a ton of grenade energy, but our grenade is super strong and it helps power us up. So we do want to throw as many grenades as possible. Plus, we want to be using our rift as much as possible, so why not get a little bit added benefit of using our rift to get more grenade energy? After that, we're bringing Font of Restoration. Now, whenever we have Armor Charge, we get a 30 stat bump to Restoration. And this is why we shoot for 70 to begin with, so that we can get basically 100 nearly all the time with how many orbs you're going to be creating. And finally, we're going to be taking Time Dilation so that our Weapon Surge and Bond of Restoration will last longer. At maximum, this is about 15 seconds longer on your cooldown. All right, now that we've covered all the armor mods, let's talk about the Seasonal Artifact. This season isn't about Void, so pick whichever mods might apply to the situation you're in. If you're running a Strand Primary, then consider Unraveling Orbs or Horde Shuttle. And if you're running Solo, then pick Solar Operative. Basically, match any ones that might apply to the weapons and situation you're in. So with this build, we do like to take a Void Weapon in our energy slot as our primary weapon. So when it comes to kinetic slot, I like to take a heavy hitter or something that helps with bosses and mini bosses. Heritage and succession are great since you can get recombination leading to one super strong shot and you will be using your void weapons and void abilities a ton. So you'll basically always have one super strong shot ready to go. I also really like the scatter signal with this build. Not only does it do good boss damage and mini boss damage, but it also allows you to take advantage of unraveling rounds from this season's artifact. That paired with volatility really helps you spread some damage across the battlefield but the main thing to really look at here is your energy slot your void weapon and my number one pick is graviton lance it does massive damage and can help wipe out hordes of enemies but if you don't have graviton lance here are some other good options if you don't mind double special loadouts wave splitter is actually perfect for this build since how many orbs we create wave splitter gets amped up whenever you do pick up an orb and you'll be creating orbs left and right meaning wave splitter is not only going to have volatile rounds weapon surge but also being supercharged with its intrinsic ability because of those orbs you're creating but if you do want a primary weapon velis x is a pulse rifle with repulsor brace and golden tricorn that can pair perfectly with this build if you want to take something like an smg Something like Funnel Web with Subsistence and Adrenaline Junkie are perfect since we will be throwing so many grenades. Or if you can get it to drop, the Ross Argo 4 has some fantastic perk combos like Repulsor Brace and Onslaught or Subsistence and Golden Tricorn. This is a world drop weapon, so there's no good way to farm it, but it does have some nasty combos. 
Repulsor Brace is also super strong with this build since you will be weakening basically everything in sight. All right, let's talk about your heavy weapon. There are some fantastic void heavy weapons out there. The Braytech Osprey is a rocket launcher that just got a buff to its ammo economy, which can be farmed from Nightfalls. Doomed Partitioner is also the best linear in the game. However, linears aren't doing much DPS right now, but it is worth noting in case they do make a comeback. You could also use the Regnant, which is a grenade launcher, and can roll with auto-loading holster and explosive light, which is fantastic for dealing damage to mini bosses and dealing decent boss DPS. If you have the exotic slot open, you can either take Leviathan's Breath or Two-Tailed Fox for decent DPS when it comes to bosses. Guardians, we've reached the end of our journey through the darkness and unveiled one of the strongest void builds out there with the soulbound build from creating explosions with volatile rounds to constantly weakening from our void souls this build has proven its worth in every part of pve content remember mastering these builds is only the beginning experiment with different combinations and tweak your loadouts to suit your playstyle, and never stop honing your skills if you found this video helpful or just enjoyed seeing a new perspective feel free to like the video and comment down below what you might change or how you'd improve the soulbound build keep an eye out for future videos as we continue to explore the ever-evolving world of destiny 2 until then may the threads of fate be ever in your favor this is lucky mech signing off see you on the next adventure guardians